The Earth is a glow. They turned Minecraft's PewDiePie into a real thing. Vector is just a transformer. Traps are only a little gay. Yep. That's me, Stefanofro. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. Well, it's a long story. Let's rewind a bit. It all started in my Discord server. A few delinquents banded together and created a cursed channel without my knowledge. I tried to ignore it, pretend it didn't exist. But it just sat there, watching, waiting to be clicked. In a moment of courage, or maybe it was weakness, my world got turned upside down. This is that story. The Lagomorph Mystery Shorby was having a nice day farming Elo from the salt mines using highly dangerous toxic carcinogenic chemicals. Because, as most people know, Shorby is very familiar with cancer. As he was peacefully gaining Elo by the second, he heard heavy breathing and sloppy footsteps that progressively became louder and louder. What, what is that? Shorpy paused in his stereoscopic hearing to determine that the sound was coming from behind him. Who's there? He turned around to see Little Stork all the wet and sticky, hobbling towards him. Shorpy noticed that Stork was oozing a very bizarre green goo out of his nose, eyes, and mouth. Scorpy, <laughs> help me! Before he managed to finish his sentence, he passed out. This shot Scorpy greatly. Oh my god! <laughs> he sporadically threw his hands into the air and bolted out of the salt mines to the little hut he called home. Scorpy took a few hours to convince himself that he could be the one to solve Stoke's strange behavior. After all, Stoke was his first partner in bed. Oh, Stoke. I can't let you go out like this. I can figure this out. The things you said to me on that breezy summer day. <laughs> Nobody's ever made me feel that way before. I know I can save you, but I'll need some detective consultation. I need Stefanofro. He knew he could trust Steph. As Steph mm -hmm. often shares his delicious cat porridge around the neighborhood, should be spent nearly an hour knocking on Steph's door. Let me in! He continued this non-stop before he got tired and decided to completely obliterate the door with his pre-owned hammer. <laughs> Another mystery arose as the house is completely empty. No furniture, no staff, and no cat porridge. It's empty. Did Steph move to a different residence? Shorpy stood there puzzled for a moment. Hmm. Maybe Radar knows something. So he went knocking on Steph's neighbor's door, Radar, to ask about Steph's new address. <laughs> Another hour went by, completely wasted, as nobody came to answer the door. You know what? Screw this. I'll just bust through every door I find. He smashed through the door with his hammer, but what he found only arose more questions than answers. He's still smashing through the door. It's empty. Where is everybody? Radar's house had the same eeriness emptiness as Steph's house. This set Schwerpy into an epileptic shock. He trembled and shuddered on the entrance of Radar's doorstep for the rest of the night. The next morning, he woke up, rather groggy, and went to Steph's house to look for clues. He scoured every inch of the house, sometimes even straining his eyes looking at the most minute details. I need something. Anything. Ew, what? Wait, what? Schwerpy, not paying attention to the floor, stepped into the bizarre green goo he saw emerging out of Little Stork yesterday. Oh yeah, that happened. <laughs> Woo! Aha! Finally a clue! But, wait. This goo came directly from Little Stork, didn't it? Hmm, p -Laws is a big science guy. Maybe he can help me figure out what this goo is. Schwerpy collected a sample of this goo and stored it in his pocket. <laughs> Then he set out over to Pilo's laboratory. Oh, Klaus, thanks goodness you're here. Oh, what the hell? What? I wasn't sure if cause Steph is, <laughs> cause I wasn't sure if cause Steph is and, and Red are they're, they're missing. And oh little stork, my sweet little stork. Aww. <laughs> Shh. Say no more. Pilo's reached out his hand to comfort him, but alas, he recoiled, knowing the deep relationship Schwarpy held with the stork. Here, here, here. Just give me the goo. I can run some tests. Okay. 
Those were former questionable and unhealthy lab tests on the goo, which included touching it with his bare hands, looking at it very closely without eye protection, and tasting it with his tongue for extra measure. Flos concluded that it was secreted by an organism known as a lagomorph. Schwerpy was intrigued. He had never indulged himself in this amount of information so quickly. He passed out due to another epilepsy which lasted only about an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Keeps going. When he regained consciousness, he led Pilo straight to the salt mines to find Stork lying flat on the ground. He was not moving, but signs showed he was still alive, luckily. Little Stork! Little Stork! Are you okay? Pilos, what do we do? Plos leaned down to inspect the body, checking for Pulse. He's, uh, he's still alive. Wait, what are you? Shubi was sent to a blind rage at the sight of Stork's immobile body. In a panic, he humped Stork aggressively as an attempt to get him up. That's Shubi, what? Much to his surprise, the humping worked. <laughs> Wait, I'm there doing the unholy screech. Reed! Little Stork screeched an unholy sound. Sat up and then looked over Schwerpy and Pilos. We must find big, no tip on the baby. <laughs> Where is this body, Stork? Where is it and what did it do to you? Schwerpy gently caressed Stork's face. They put their faces together as close as possible as Stork answered in the thickest Swedish accent ever laid upon any living human's ear. <laughs> Partner, I have no knowledge of the morality appropriate lag of current invocation, and I have been incapitated for over five hours. They had their faces, blushing as red as a fresh tomato. It seemed as though they couldn't exchange a single glance at one another without salivating even just a little bit. What? The hell? After engaging in a non-family friendly act of hand holding for an unnecessarily long amount of time, the two realized that Pilos was missing. <laughs> Pilos wasn't known to suddenly disappear, being that he was considered the most normal human in the entire neighborhood. They decided to investigate his whereabouts, starting with his house. Shorpy thrust it into the house after bursting the door. Hello, Pilos? Unsurprisingly, nobody was there. Shorpy turned a little stork. Stork, my sweet. Walk with me. We can head to Alvo's place. Maybe Pilos went to Alvo to help him find the Lego more. It took several hours to get to Alvo's house. But they both kept sleeping oh, and oh, 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 oh god, oh. What's that? Oh, it's Alvo's house. Cool. Shorpy turned to the door as the two decided to obliterate it right away without knocking. The two had no regrets because they thought Alvo wouldn't be home either. Ah! Hey, hey, what the f <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Alvo's door was broken into atoms. The pair exhausted out of their minds, tried to explain to the best of their ability what had happened in the last two days. Uh, so basically, I was like, uh, uh, I was over there and I, some, I, I found uh, some like and they're like, they're like, I broke down a lot of doors oh, and I feel really bad about it. Uh, I don't really know so, so, how yeah, mm, uh, My boots are very hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I have a plan. Oh, should it be? Alvo has a plan. Wow. Yeah. And that was it. Alvo had a plan. <laughs> As they determine the simplest way to carry out the plan to catch the magical Lagomorph beast and hopefully force it to release the fauna from Radar, they heard glass shattering downstairs. Oh, what was that? <clears throat> Dude, I got this. Stork swiped Alvo's scythe and went downstairs to investigate. What Stork didn't expect was that the source of the breaking glass was actually Pilaw busting into the house. Despite the door already being smashed down, Alvo angrily belittled Pilaw's for engaging in the act of property damage and breaking and entering. You stupid diabolical son of Satan supported child. Alvo, shut up! Guys, I found where Steph and Red are being held. <laughs> The lack of more took up, you see. I was working on my carrot farm one day when I decided to take a break to watch some quality TikTok video. Why do you have to keep being a furry a secret? Why do you have to call it coming? When I returned to tend to my carrot, something was different. After rigorous testing in my lab, I discovered that a lack of more secret is gonad cells into my carrot farm. <laughs> The Gano cells acted as viruses and they infected their host, forcing them to emit green goo. This green goo acts like a beacon to help the Lagomorph track down its prey. 
Once it finds them, it lays its eggs inside of its victims, hatching new lagomorphs and providing the new generation with sustenance immediately. Wait, hold on. The other locals were probably affected as well. Everyone eats your carrots, Plols. Alvo turned away from Pilos. Except you. <laughs> Plols, you already know this. I can't eat plant cells. I'm incapable of doing so due to my carnivorous diet. Pilos didn't understand a word Alvo said, but decided to ignore it. So what were you guys talking about? Well... Shorpy filled Pilos with information about the plan and what they wanted to do. <laughs> Pilos thought for a moment, then smirked and placed his hands on the table. Do you have a plan? Dude, I think he has a plan. I have a plan. Pilos had a plan. <laughs> the next morning, Alvo, Pilos, and Stork and Schwerpy went to the Lagomorph's deep nest. It was terrifying, green goo everywhere, and the strong musky aroma pierced their noses. Here, boys, ladies, hazmat suits. Pilos distributed the hazmat suits, and everyone prepped their weapons of choice. Plos, you should go first. Wait, 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 what? Why? Well, this is all kind of your fault, isn't it? Uh, fair enough, I guess. Pilos led the group, with Alvo following second as he was the one with the inability of digesting plant cells, therefore being the most sane. Schwerpy and Stork went in together, holding hands with a robust grin. <laughs> <laughs> you're cute. No, you're cute. No, you're cute. No, this, you're cute. This went on for some time. <laughs> <laughs> this broken guys. Look, there's a path of goop. If we follow it, that might lead us to the beast. Maybe even Steph and Redder. The group followed the path and soon arrived at a cavern. Look, I see Steph, Redder. <laughs> the fauna and Redder were both closed off in a small area. Trapped in the goop cocoon seemingly unconscious. However, they weren't fully unconscious. The group soon found out as they were whispering truthful things such as The Earth is a globe. They turned Minecraft's PewDiePie into a real thing. Vector is just a transformer. Traps are only a little gay. Stock, Shwippy, can you try to get them free? Uh, you. <laughs> oh no, that's Buster Brown. The, the couple ran towards their missing friends. They didn't want to use anything sharp or dangerous, as it might hurt them. I know! There is one thing I know we're both good at. Schwerpy looked at Stork knowingly and quickly nodded with a gentle grin. Hey. Using their salivary glands past their maximum potential, they corroded the thick, concentrated goop into a water of disgust. No signs of the Lagomorph? Maybe it's not home? A second later, they heard a loud stomping sound, which progressively got louder. I said that too strong, didn't I? Okay, what is that? Is the ground shaking? It's getting louder! Alvo and Pilon stood their ground and had their weapons up, ready to fight the oncoming danger. It smells like rubbish. Well, no crap, we're in a rabbit's nest. <laughs> Guys! <laughs> then suddenly, there it was, the beast itself, standing at a whopping 25 meters tall. The Lagomorph's eyes were glowing red, teeth as sharp as a drill. Well, I think that's good enough. We ca we carry them now, Swerpy. <laughs> but look, I mean, oh look, it's the monster. It's blocking the main entrance. The Lagomorph just stood there, breathing heavily and not doing much except looking very intimidating. Uh, he's just standing there. Oh, we go and eat rabbit satay tonight. <laughs> Quick side note, satay is a traditional Malaysian dish, but using rabbit meat instead of chicken or beef. Thank you for your time. Since Avo was a sociopath, he did not feel bad for eating such an adorable creature. He only cared about the taste. Without warning, Pilos, with his trusty blade and stick, struck the abdomen of the Lagomorph. Yeah. The Lagomorph was just standing there, not doing much, but now bleeding. We could have just walked around it. It was too late to do anything at that point. The Lagomorph was fuming, roaring as it bared its teeth and long, sharp claws. <laughs> Disabled guitar pains. Steph and Radar were starting to gain consciousness. H Hello? Oh, I didn't see you there. Schwerpy and Stork dropped them on the cold, hard ground as they struggled to even sit upright. 
Stork explained to them what had happened, but everything he said was in the heavy Swedish accent. Uh, uh, carrots, pee pee virus, big rat, pee, menstruation. I. <laughs> Uh, Steph and Radar didn't understand what that meant, so Steph decided to ignore it and instead ask. Where are we? This sent Stork into an aggressive epileptic tantrum, which included him sporadically twisting on the ground and shouting random Swedish words in a very undignified manner. Oh, <laughs> Meanwhile, the Lagomorph chased, chased around Pinewolves in a circular motion as it slashed its claws around randomly without any coordination, like one of those degenerates we like to call a Surrey Mains. This shouldn't take this much effort to kill an overgrown rabbit! Good thing I've got this durian in my back pocket. As he was chasing Pilos around, Alpha pulled out his emergency durian from his back pocket and threw it at the rabbit. It was thrown at such a velocity that upon impact, it stunned the creature. Swoopy, Redar, help me drag Little Stork out of here. This gave Pilos an easy chance to end it with a killing blow. However, something completely out of expectation happened. What's the matter with you? Our oh, dinner is standing right there. End it right now! Pilos turned and looked at Alo sheepishly. Uh, guys, I have to pee. Be right back. What? What? Now? Now? Pilos pranced off with his hands on his midsection. Ah, oh, this is helpless. And all this for what? A drop of rabbit satay? Now what will I eat for dinner? Chicken satay? <laughs> There's no, there's nothing I can do. But wait, maybe I can try the durian again. <sighs> the first impact of the durian had caused the rabbit to move even faster for some reason. Alvo tried throwing the durian at the lagomorph again, but this time the beast caught it with its mouth and quickly devoured it. What? Uh, are you serious? He ate it in one gulp? Alvo had no choice but to use weapon throws to disorientate the rabbit. Alvo looked for an opening to make his first throw onto it, and then he saw one! Now's my chance! Ha! The sight hit the animal and it pierced its back! There was no way of retrieving his weapon from that point on, so Alvo did the next best thing! He sprinted in a circle, just like he was! Oh, oh god! Uh, <laughs> he got struck, causing him to fall onto the ground! <laughs> the Lagomorph approached Alvo and lifted its arm to deliver a lethal blow! Ah, uh, no! Oh no, please, not like this. I, I I, still need to make another lance montage. <laughs> Suddenly, from the other side of the room, another durian slammed into Lagomorph's face. Alvo looked to his left to find Boomy and Steph, the only other ones responsible for saving his life. Do, do you guys want rabbit satay tonight too? Steph looked down at Alvo with a smile, reaching his hand out. Only if you cook. Right, Boomy? Oh no! <laughs> no! <laughs> A look of displeasure crossed Boomy's face as he remembered having experienced firsthand Alvo's questionable cooking methods. The Lagomorph was stunned and Alvo managed to grab his sights from its back. They proceeded to do an amazing three-man combo on the Lagomorph and slayed it with three yeah. signature moves at the yeah. same time. Oh man, I thought that was really the end of me. Oh no! <laughs> Alvo looked over at both of them with a grin. Thanks for going through all that trouble just to save me. Boomy looked back over at Alvo, returning the smile. Oh no! <laughs> Let's get out of here. Yeah. Three dragged the Halal Slayed Rabbit back to their neighborhood, <laughs> cooked it barbecue style, and ate together. Everyone enjoyed themselves, except for Pilos. He still hadn't returned after making a beeline to the restroom. Um, where's Plols? <laughs> no Pilos, he do bad with satay. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> It sounded like Lil Stork still hadn't fully recovered from his seizure, so Alvo didn't think much of it. However, Steph heard the conversation and decided to investigate for himself. Huh. He decided to make up an excuse so he could rush to Pilon's house for leads. Uh, uh, guys, uh, this rabbit saute really has whew, done a number on my bowels. I've got some bombs dropping in the ink the dry kind. He quickly dismissed himself and ran to Pilon's house. The door was already destroyed prior to his arrival. It's empty. Where? Wait, there's a box over here. Steph looked down at the box and picked it up. It looks like Pilos was trying to move out. It was... it was you, wasn't it? You... you really did it, Pilos. Uh, 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 uh. Good soul, Sherlock Afro. <laughs> Pilos calmly revealed himself behind Steph. But... but why? That doesn't matter anymore. But what does matter is that only one of us leaves this place. And it's not going to be you. Pilos, 
No! Pilal's picked up his scythe by the entrance with a sneer. Hope you've been practicing your scythe. Fought for a while, until eventually Stork heard the commotion. Little Stork! It was Pilal's! It was Pilal's the whole time! Steph and Stork teamed up against Pilal's and managed to get him into a team combo that nearly killed Pilal's. Why is someone... <laughs> Why is someone big rabbit? <laughs> It is all because of you, Stork. It was always you. I wanted to be your first part of your bed. But no, you chose a Sharpie. You chose a Sharpie over me. <laughs> Little Stark looked at Pilos, tears forming in his eyes. Uh, I'm sorry, Pilos Kun. I didn't know. <laughs> Stork leaned in towards Pilos' face and kissed his forehead. Pilos looked up at Lil Stark with one last weak breath and died. Boomy screamed as he walked into the house, throwing his head back and clutching his forehead in a hysterical sort of way. <laughs> Stefano Pro and Lil Stork explained what happened to everyone. Alvo got really pissed knowing that the Pilos didn't say that his rabbit sat day was the worst before he died. How could you? <laughs> that? Everyone enjoyed the rest of the night with Alvo's amazing rabbit sat day. <laughs> I only- it's, I'm the only one that died. Yeah, I'm, I just wanna say I will never speak in a sw I will never try to speak in a Swedish accent again. I hate myself now. <laughs> Dude, it's the best accent. I don't know what you're talking about. What's wrong? Is this the outro? <laughs> it's, wait, are we in an outro right now? I, I guess wait, this, are is, we in an outro this right is our now? Billy Eilish outro. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Schwarpy, I will kill you. <laughs> I'll kill you, buddy. You know what? You know I guess what? 1980 no, no. is not as before 2012. Yeah, exactly. 1980. Before 2012.